Hey y'all, it's Infinite Enzo, and tonight I wanted to do a video real quick, pretty short video, just about failing when you're working on a project. Uh, so this is specifically about this Citizen Eco Drive that a buddy of mine wanted me to do a mod on. This is a Hulk Smash <laughs> Citizen. Uh, it was made in affiliation with Marvel. Uh, pretty nice little watch. It's an Eco Drive, as I mentioned before, so it's solar powered, and it has a cool dial with this. Uh, dual tone kind of thing going on, radiation symbol there, and that uh, Hulk fist at the very top at the 12 o'clock. All the indices are applied as well as the logo, and you've got that cool pop of blue on the seconds hand. It's a very cool design. Uh, unfortunately, I messed it up. So what happened here is that my friend Zach wanted me to do an acid wash on this watch. If you're not familiar with an acid wash, or if you're familiar with the channel, you already know what an acid wash is because I do them all the time. But if you're not, this is what an acid wash is. This one's also been stone washed, but basically you dip a piece of metal in a form of acid. For me, I use uh, ferric chloride of water in a one-to-one -one mixture, and you basically are etching the steel. So this here is my uh, Cold Steel 8015 Lite Aus 10A steel. I call this one the uh, Midnight Mod. Here we have a Cold Steel 8010 S35VN steel. Again, the same kind of wash. This time I also washed the uh, lock bar as well as the pocket clip. Did a Dremel uh, rock carved pattern on the, on the backspacer there. This one I call the Gungnir Mod. And lastly, another example here, the Kaiser Critical Mini in 3V. This one's my abyss wash, as I call it. It's a triple tone wash done by layering, followed by a stone wash. So as you can see, I'm very familiar with acid washing and stone washing blades. However, I've never done it on a watch. And he approached me, my friend Zach, about doing this to his watch. And I told him, you know, I've never done it before. I'm not sure what the outcome will be. I can't guarantee it'll turn out perfect. But I said, I think I can do it. And that's on me, and I have to take responsibility for that. So I did, uh, long story short, this, this turned out very badly. I paid him back for the watch. Uh, but it was a lesson, and I feel like it's going to be useful information to anybody that wants to try acid washing a watch. So in this case, this Citizen appears to be made, the case at least, appears to be made out of 316L stainless steel. Unfortunately, Citizen themselves don't tell you what type of steel it is. They simply just say stainless steel. I'm assuming it's 316L simply by the way that it behaved under the acid wash. So what it did uh, initially, and I'm going to roll in some footage as well of me uh, disassembling this. And uh, just so you see that I, I knew what I was doing in terms of the disassembly, I was totally shooting in the dark when it came to the, wa to the acid wash. But... Initially, I submerged this for five minutes, had absolutely no effect, no wearing of the, uh, no etching of the uh, steel, just nothing. And then I doubled, doubled it to 10 minutes, still no effect. Uh, then I extended it up to an hour, still absolutely no effect. Every time I pulled this watch case out of the acid, it was totally unmarked. And so I was really kind of just mystified and I started to think, well, this steel could be so stainless that it needs to be in there for a, you know extend, an extended period of time. In retrospect, that should have been the point where I thought you know something different's going on here because when you compare this to these blade steels, this 3V took about three minutes per layer. The Austin A took a total of like four minutes, and the S35VM was like five or six. You know, compare that to what ended up being eight hours for this, and it didn't even etch. Uh, what it ended up doing instead was pitting. Now, I think you guys can see that around the bezel. There's some here. Uh, just, just pitting away as if the acid was eating at it instead of etching it. There's also a significant amount. I can't show it here because I've already screwed in the case back. But underneath the case back, there is just an absurd amount of pitting going on back there. So, for every, you know... 10 mods or so that you do that are successful, there's going to be one that's a failure, and hopefully that's one that you learn from. And anyway, that's what I've learned here is, if, if this is indeed 316L, 
you just it, it doesn't behave the way that blade steels do. A lot of the reasoning I think there is that with blade steels, there's kind of a triangle that you have to worry about, and the three points of that triangle are edge retention, toughness, and stainlessness. Uh, Sal Glesser from Spyderco kind of famously famously said, "You can have two that are really good. You, you pick two, and that'll be your steel, unless you want to pay a whole lot of money for all three. So. In the case of steels, most steels are not stainless enough to resist a chloride, uh, like, the, like the ferric chloride that I use in my acid mixture. However, this 316L, there's no edge that needs to be retained with this. You're simply making a protective case out of steel. You're not, you're not making a sharp edge that needs to be held over a long period of time. So that factor is removed. So really at that point, all you're worrying about is stainlessness and toughness. And so I'm assuming that that aspect of 316L combined with the fact that when I looked at its makeup there's a lot of molybdenum in it and I think that that leads to this really high resistance against uh, chlorides and other caustic materials. Um, I'm not a chemist at all. I'm completely a DIYer. I don't even do this as a business. I just do this for fun. So anybody that happens to be an expert, if you want to comment down below, I'm sure that will help out anybody that's looking to try acid washing a watch. But Moral of the story is, guys, I had a really bad time doing it. I don't recommend that you try to acid wash slash stone wash a watch. Now, the reason I thought it could be done, I'll link it below as well, was a forum post where a fellow managed to acid and stone wash his Seiko SNK. I can't remember the full reference number. It's the one, though, that everybody knows. It's the very popular Seiko Pilot watch. Um, I believe it's a Seiko 5. I'm not sure, but... Super popular watch. I'm sure you all know it without me even having to show a photo of it. But I'll link that post below. But he had a success, a successful go at it. Uh, he acid washed it, stone washed it. It looked great. I don't know what the steel, again, I don't know what the steel was. It may have been 304, which is a little bit less uh, resistant to chloride. I don't think it's res resistant at all to chlorides. It is still stainless, but it's not going to resist the acid effects that, uh, that this one apparently is capable of doing. Um, so... Yeah, guys, just that, I just wanted to share that. I think that it's important for people, um, you know, people that go on YouTube like myself and post, you know, mods and stuff. Um, I think it's important to highlight when you mess up and what you can learn from that. So I would suggest do not get into acid washing watches. If you know of a way to do it, um, or particularly if you know of a way to acid wash 316L, I'd like to hear it. Feel free to comment that down below. But that's all today, guys. Just something a little bit different. And, um, any any uh, input, please please drop it below. But uh, yeah, guys, thanks for stopping by, and I will see y'all in the next one.